talk about the uh, structure of plasma membrane. So you have learned that each cell is enclosed with a thin plasma membrane, which separates the living cell from its environment. So according to the fluid project model, protein molecules float within the phospholipid bilayer. So phospholipid bilayer it consists of two things, a polar head which is hydrophilic and a polar tail, non-polar tail which is hydrophobic. So the head will face the cytoplasm and the environment and the non-polar tail will face each other. As I said, there is a protein molecule that is floating on the plasma membrane. So what the protein do? The protein will transport nutrients from outside to inside the cytoplasm. So there are two types of protein which is channel protein and carrier protein. Channel protein is the protein that has a pole. Uh, at the center so the small molecule will enter the cytoplasm from the channel protein so carrier protein it it can read the data from the molecule that want to enter the cytoplasm so when it open the molecule will enter the protein and have a big shape when it close and it will drop the molecule to the cytoplasm like this. Now I'm going to talk about passive transport, one of the movement of substance in the cell membrane. Okay. Uh, there's two main principles that we need to remember in passive transport. First, passive transport goes down the concentration gradient means it goes from a high concentration area to a low concentration area until dynamic equilibrium is achieved. Uh, to put it simple, let's imagine you you have you have three ringgit three ringgit and your friend has only one. So if this goes down the concentration gradient uh, the higher concentration area will go to the lower concentration area until dynamic equilibrium is achieved until both sides are equal in amount. Okay uh, second principle, uh, like riding a bicycle down the hill, it, passive transport does not require energy. So three examples of passive transport are osmosis, simple diffusion, and facilitated diffusion. The difference, the difference between these three, uh, the type of substance that is moved, and where does it diffuse through? So for osmosis, osmosis is the movement of water from a high concentration area to a lower concentration area through a selective permeable membrane which is in this case the cell membrane okay likewise uh, secondly uh, simple diffusion simple diffusion is uh, the movement of small nonpolar molecules such as oxygen and hydrogen to the cell membrane by the lipid lastly facilitated diffusion uh, is the movement of large molecules that does not diff that cannot diffuse through the plasma I mean cell membrane but so it needs the help of channel protein or the carrier protein I'll give you an example glucose glucose is needed for the cell but it cannot go through the cell membrane so it needs the help of carrier protein so it can diffuse through the cell membrane to get into the cell now I'm going to tell you about active transport. So movements across the plasma membrane may be occurred by active transport. So what is active transport? First of all, it requires energy from the ATP molecule. Why? So that it can move against the concentration gradient. As we all know, diffusion moves from high concentration to low concentration, while active transport moves from low concentration to high concentration. Next. It requires specific carrier protein with specific sites. As an example, the sodium potassium channel protein, which is only specified for sodium and potassium ion. Other than that, we also have proton pump, which is only specified for hydrogen ions. Lastly, 
it has receptors to bind with ATP molecule so that it can change the shape when a phosphate group attaches to it. Now, I'm going to give you an example hoping that you will understand the process of active transport. Now, we have the sodium potassium pump as an example. For the process of excretion, three sodium ions is bound to the carrier protein. Adenosine triphosphate, which has three phosphate groups, decomposed to become adenosine diphosphate, which has two phosphate groups and a phosphate. This phosphate binds with the carrier protein. The phosphate bond between the phosphate and the carrier protein provides energy for the carrier protein to change its shape, enabling the sodium ion to be transported out of the cell. For the process of accumulation, two potassium ions from outside of the cell is bound to the carrier protein. Then, the phosphate group leaves the carrier protein. With no energy supply, this forces it to change into its original shape, enabling the potassium ion to be transported into the cell. Next, we are going to learn about isotonic solution, hypotonic solution, and hypertonic solution. In an isotonic solution, the solution and the cell have the same concentration of solution and they have reached the dynamic equilibrium. In a hypotonic solution, the solution has low solute concentration and high water potential. Water will be used from the solution to the cell by osmosis to reach dynamic equilibrium. In hypertonic solution, the solution has high solute concentration and low water potential. Water will be used from the, from the cell to the solution by osmosis to reach dynamic equilibrium. Now, let us say the only cell is a red blood cell. And the red blood cell is placed into an isotope solution, causing the cell to maintain their shape. Now, when we place the red blood cell into a hypotonic solution, causing the cell to swell and burst. This is because the plasma membrane cannot withstand the osmotic pressure built up in the cell. The first of the red blood cell is called hemolysis. If we place the red blood cell in a hypertonic solution, this will cause the cell to shrink. The shrinking process of the red blood cell is called trination. And the plant cell is placed into an isotonic solution, the plant cell will become passive. This is because the set of the plant cell and the extracellular solution are isotonic to each other. The plant cell are placed into a hypertonic solution. Water will be fused into the vacuous of the plant cell by osmosis. This will cause the vacuous to expand and push cytoplasm and plasma membrane against the cell wall. In this condition, the cell wall are said to be aged. The plant cell will not burst like the red plant cell in a hypertonic solution. This is because the plant cell has a cell wall that is strong. Lastly, the plant cells are placed in a hypertonic solution. What they will produce out of the vacuous and osmosis. The vacuous and cytoplasm will shrink, causing the plasma membrane to be pulled away from the cell wall. This is known as plasmolysis. Plasmolysis causes the leaves and stem to bend down and away. But the lysis plant cells can maintain their ability if the cells are returned to a hypotonic solution immediately. This is known as metastasis. Let's go. Gini ke putih itu. Cut it into small pieces like this. Now dry them off with a piece of tissue paper. Measure the thickness of two of them I like guess Now, label them Now, prepare a water solution and a salt solution Drop the potato into the solution After one hour, take them out and dry them Then, measure the thickness of them
as we can see there is difference before and after